In the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus the Amen. For our comedian, heard him before. Amen. He's been on BET and a couple other places. Amen. Please put your hands together and give a warm welcome. Amen. To Pastor Lester Berry. Amen. All right, thank you so much. How's everybody doing tonight? I want to say happy birthday to the bishop and his lovely wife. You, happy birthday. Uh, Y'all, did, did we sing happy birthday yet? Did we do that? Did, we didn't do that yet? All right, let's do, can, can I, I mean, I got the mic, so let's do that. Everybody, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bishop. Happy birthday to you. Let's go old school. How old? Oh, never mind. You know, forget that part. Let's, let's go black. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Give him a hand, please. Give him a hand, please. Please. All right. Amen. All right. Thank you. Hey. She going to sing the whole song. Amen. Bishop, I want to thank you for letting me be a part of your special day. As I look around the room, this is a good looking group of people. Yes, it is. It's a good-looking group of people. I don't know how you get this many good-looking people in one place at one time. Praise God. Clearly, the birthday party for your ugly friends and family is a little bit later. So They'll be here at 10. Hopefully, we'll be out of here by then. Amen. <laughs> Hopefully. Amen. So. Um, I, I want to bring y'all greetings from Bible Believers Missionary Baptist Church in Lakewood, California, where I am the senior pastor. And so thank you so much. And because uh, uh, I know when he said they said it's going to be a comedian, then he said he's a pastor. I, I have to clear that up. I, I did host Comic View. I'm Deaf Comedy Jam, All Star Apollo Legend. But I was first a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what I was first. And so God allowed me to do comedy as long as I thought I needed to do it. And then he made me realize that only what I did for him was going to amount to anything. And so now I'm pastoring on Sunday morning and then I do comedy when I'm invited and it's just a big, it's just a big pulling on me, amen. Uh, my church is small though. People say, well, how do you do both? I said, listen, don't get excited. My church is small, all right? I got 12 good members, all right? <laughs> yeah good members but I'd rather have 12 members serious about praising God than a church full of people trying to fake their way into heaven so I got 12 good members sometimes we ride the church in the same van you know one of them 15 passengers you know if we if we turn the music up real loud if we get the Holy Ghost we turn around and go back home <laughs> We ain't have to go all the way down there for 12 members. That way, if they don't want to, you know, they don't really want to get excited about God, you know. I'm not saying it's too small. I'm just saying some Sundays I just want to email my sermon in that way. That way they don't want to say amen. They could just push delete. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I should have brought some members to this too, Pastor. I should have. I should have, Bishop, brought some members to this so they can see what church can be like when it grows up. Amen. People tell me all the time when they find out I hosted Comic View and I'm actually a pastor, when they find out that's not a joke and I'm serious, they look at me and they go, you know what, you know, Lester, you, you, you kind of cool, man. You know, I'm going to come visit your church, but I'm going to sit in the back. I tell them, ain't no back. 
If you sitting in the back, you sitting in the front. <laughs> My mama came, sat in the back. She was in the pulpit with me. I had a blessed offering. She stole five dollars. But I knew how she was when I invited her up there. Amen. You know my favorite part of church? I'm one, I'm one of those people that have always loved going to church. Does anybody, can anybody say that's just been me? I've always loved going to church. My favorite part of church is the ministry of helps. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> the ministry of helps. Now you got a big zoom lens on there, brother. You can, can you go stand over there and just zoom in? You ain't going to stand right there the whole time, are you? People over there can't see. You got your kango in the way. Your, your tail is wagging. You can't, you can't get the zoom lens. Like he all right up on me too. Look at the people right here. I hope he don't got gas. Can you just go? <laughs> Bishop, I can't work like this. Can he? Just over. Thank you. I appreciate you, brother. God bless you. You can always tell when an ex-pimp tried to go straight. <laughs> Trying to straighten his life out. I'm just giving him flashbacks. <laughs> what was I? I was saying, oh yeah, I like the ministry of helps. Some people, everybody's heard of pastoring, preaching, ushering, singing, musician. A lot of people don't know about the ministry of helps. The ministry of helps is when, ladies, when you get the Holy Ghost and you fall out, and, you're, and the ministry of helps is who come put that rag over you when you fall so your, people ain't looking all under your dress, right? And not in my church. You better cover yourself up when you fall. <laughs> I like a church. I've been to Bishop's church at least once. I like his church because it looked like the type of church that when the spirit hit real high, anybody know what I'm talking about? When the spirit hit real high, you can just take off running and get you a victory lap in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, she said, amen. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know what it is about the Holy Spirit makes some people take off running. You ever been one of them churches where the spirit just hit high and people just go, oh, they just take off running around the room. And you be like, look at God. Look at God. The Holy Spirit is like Gatorade. Is he in you? Amen. I love that offering that she just gave. I love that. Amen. That was an offering. Give her a hand clap of praise. Uh, giving a, lifting a good offering is an art. I need you at my pastor appreciation. Amen. Amen. She reminded me of that character I played in the movie. Y'all don't, don't see Don't Be a Menace while drinking your juice in the hood. I played the preacher in that. They won't let me live it down. I like the way she lifted that offer. I, I thought any minute now she was going to go, well, get the collection plate round on that side. <laughs> they leaving Deacon. <laughs> My grandmother told me that you can tell the difference between churches by the way they lift their offering. Have you heard this before? They said, by, you can tell a difference in the type of church you in by how they lift the offering. They said in the, she told me, this is my grandmother told me this. She said in the white church, they draw a triangle in the middle of the floor. They take that Sunday's offerings and they throw it up in the air. Anything landing inside that triangle belongs to God. Anything outside the triangle, well, that belongs to the preacher. They said in the Mexican church, they draw in a square in the middle of the floor. They take that Sunday's offerings, they throw it up in the air. Anything landing inside that square belongs to God. Anything outside the square belongs to the bishop. But you see, in the black Baptist church, we don't draw no triangles and we don't draw no square. Y'all don't hear me. We just take all of Sunday's offerings and we throw it up in the air. <laughs> Whatever stays up there belongs to God. Can I get a win? That's the way we do things at the Greater Ebenezer New Revival Tree of Life Institutional Double Rock on the side of the road to Jericho Missionary Baptist Church of Zion. Did I say Mount Calvary? Y'all don't hear me. I'm telling you, you can tell something about a church 
but how they lift that offering. Bishop, I really can't work like this. Is there any way you can command these brothers to, to just way too close? I've been doing comedy a long time. I have never. <laughs> this is 2013. They got Zoom lenses. They got a lens. You catch this whole show from the other side of the water. <laughs> these brothers right here. <laughs> They bought that camera back when she bought that Benz, back in 03. <laughs> All right. But this is a good looking group of people. Ladies, I, I see you. I, ladies got their hair did. I believe in giving women props when they, because women, when they know it's going to be other women there, they spend a long time getting their hair done before they go out. So I believe in showing women love. It's a lady in the back. I ain't going to point it out. It's a lady in the back. She got her hair down over her eye. She gonna miss half the show like that. <laughs> she looking up here right now. What'd he say, girl? What'd he say? I heard half of it. Happy 25th birthday, bitch. <laughs> but don't get me wrong. At least I love supporting women when they, uh, you know, got their hair did like this. But I like a woman that don't care, too. Because, you know, I'm from the south side of Chicago. I like a sister that don't care, too. You know what I mean? Snatch her hair back in that ponytail. But then the hair barely be in that ponytail. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you know that ponytail where she got to keep smiling or her hair pop out the ponytail? No matter what I say, she be like. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know she better keep smiling. <laughs> she stop smiling, her hair go pop. Ooh, girl. Girl, go to the bathroom with me. Go to the bathroom. A lot of good looking brothers in here tonight too. Brothers, a lot of brothers in here used to be all that. A lot of old, yes, a lot of old school used to be all that brothers in here tonight. Amen. A lot of brothers, a lot of bald head brothers. God bless you, I see you. I ain't making fun of nobody. I'm losing my hair too. You know what I mean? My hairline used to be way down here, bitch. Take me 15 minutes to wash my face in the morning. All right? So I ain't making fun of nobody, I'm just saying. That's a black man option to cut all his hair off. You don't usually see white men cut all their hair off. A white man usually ain't gonna cut his hair off. And though he not, he refuse. White man start losing his hair, he'll take that hair from the side, fold it over the top. And a black man ain't going out like that because naps don't fold over. You can't fold over no nap. You look silly with naps going around your head. You try to fold over a dreadlock, you just look silly. You can't fold over a ponytail, pimp. You can't. These are jokes, laugh or don't laugh. There's no, there's no in between. This brother, ooh. Black people always want to get, see somebody get beat up. And don't let them talk about your ponytail like that, ex-pimp. Ooh. I have a surprise for y'all. Let me get this out the way. I have, I have a surprise for you guys, Bishop. I don't even tell people this when they invite me to do comedy on the program. It's a surprise. I like to spring it on people, you know, because I like the expression on their face when they didn't even see it coming. They didn't even expect it. It's a surprise, and, and you know, we can call it a birthday present, something I have for you. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to stay to the end, and, af and after the program is over, we're going to lock the doors. And we going to whoop two kids right here on this one. My man right here, he don't know if I'm serious or not. Look, he looking, like, he looking around. Ain't but one kid in here. That means you get whooped twice. I'm playing, little man. Come on, man. It's a joke. 
You know what I said I never wanted to be? I don't want to be one of them black comedians that always say, you ever hear black, if you've ever been to a black comedy show, this is what you always hear black comedians say. You always hear black comedians say that white people don't whoop their kids. You ever hear that? I never want to be one of them black comedians that say that. This is not true. It is not true that white people do not whoop their kids. That is not true. I don't care what you see on the news. It's not true. I was in Texas. Hello. I saw a white man whooping his son so good. Can I say it like that? He was whooping his son so good. I got the Holy Ghost standing there watching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kid be like, I was in the mall. This man, white man started whooping his kid with a belt. I was like, tear him up. <laughs> tear him up. I ran over there, got me a lick in. Pow! The white man looked at me and said, I got it, buddy. I'm like, I'm sorry, I thought we was whooping them. You know it takes a village <laughs> to whoop a child. I do believe in showing kids love, though. I'm a big advocate for whooping kids. The Bible says if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. So I'm a big believer and an advocate of whooping kids. But at the same time, I tell parents, if you're not going to show your kids how much you love and support them too, well, then you do just as much harm, if not more, if you, if you, if you, if you don't whoop them. You know what I mean? My son, let me say this about my son. My son, 18. My son, me and his mama, we should have never been together. <laughs> Can I say it like that? We should have never been together. But that it had nothing to do with that little boy. You understand what I'm saying? I hear brothers all the time, oh, me and my baby mama, we don't get along. I said, why don't you spend time with your kids? Man, I don't ever see a kid at church. Man, me and my baby mama, we don't get along. I always tell them, look, you got along one night. Okay? You found a way to get along one night. There's no point in taking out on the kid. My son, I, that's, I'm his biggest fan. I whoop him in a heartbeat, but I have, I'm his biggest fan. You don't understand what I'm saying. Can I brag about my son for a second without y'all judging me? Can I brag? Because baby girl right here, she's looking at me like I'm one of the L.A. preachers. Can I just brag about my son without being judged by you? She's looking at me like I'm Clarence McClendon. Can I just, I'm just, can I brag about my son? She looking at me like, go on, Dietrich Haddon. Can I just talk about my son for a second? I'm his biggest fan, all right? His first time playing Little League Baseball, I'm not making this up. My boy got up to the plate. My boy hit the ball, right? Can I say it that way? My boy hit the ball. And then the Lord is my witness. He took off running the wrong way around the bases. <laughs> I was still proud. I said, run, boy. Go around second, slide in the first base. <laughs> now his mama there, I'm there, her new boyfriend is there. He gonna look at me, new boyfriend gonna look at me and say, he going the wrong way. I looked him back, I said, little Negro fast too, ain't he? <laughs> he just like his daddy, going the wrong way fast. <laughs> First time in the field, my son caught the ball. He cocked it, and then he looked up in the stands at me. He said, what am I supposed to do now, daddy? I said, throw the ball. He threw it on the floor right in front of him. Ah. I said, all right, walk away. Give somebody else a turn. <laughs> Got to show your kids love. Got to show them that unconditional love. Got to show them that support. Yes, you do. You have to. And, 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 and folk need to think about these kids before y'all get together. Folk get together, have kids, they don't think about this. They break up. You know who suffers? The kids is the one who suffers. And then brothers, brothers be fighting and arguing with the woman in front of the child. Listen, I tell brothers all the time. Um, let me back up. I just got married recently. Uh, July 6th was my wedding. And my wife, <laughs> wife, first lady, put your head up so they can see you. I believe my marriage is going to work this time. <laughs> I 
got a plan, ladies. Ladies, I have a plan. I got a strategy for how to make the marriage work this time. I got a plan. Ladies, say ride, ride. All right, I got a plan. It's a strategy. Basically, basically, I'm going to do whatever my wife tells me to do. I'm going to see how that work out. Ladies, how you think that's going to work? Yeah. Right. I did that at the Laugh Factory one night. It was a black woman in the front row. I'm not making this up. She started crying. She was like, that's beautiful. I was like, why are you crying? She said, because we don't never hear that. I tell brothers all the time, women are particular. Women are a particular species. You guys, ladies want things done a certain way. They got opinions about the curtains, the floor, the car, the clothes, the basket, where you put your shoes, the toilet seat got to be down, but uh, uh, you know, the walls. Uh, uh, women have opinions, uh, they're particular about everything. Men, we don't care. That's us, that's a man, that's a man thing. We don't care. And we only care about stuff to the extent that you just leave us alone, right? So I tell brothers, if you are a man arguing with a woman about everything a woman is particular about, you're going to sit there and fight a woman on all the stuff she care about. You know what? You gay. Yeah, you gay. You may as well go on here. It's California, 2013. You can get married. Don't even marry no woman if you're going to argue with her about everything she particular about. Some men don't like strong women. I, I love a strong woman. You know what I mean? I tell brothers all the time, you need a strong woman. And nothing against anybody that marries outside the race. The true love shows no color. But I love a strong black woman. You got to have a strong black woman in your corner, especially if you got bad credit. And I do. If you... You get a weak woman on the phone arguing with your creditor, she crying. We don't have no money. You crying, she crying. We don't have any money. <laughs> Stop calling here. Listen, don't nobody handle a creditor quite like a sister. A sister on the phone with your creditor, totally different. I said we don't have it. I told y'all yesterday we didn't have it. What you gonna do, call here every day and ask for that money? So what you gonna do, call here every day and ask for that money? Look here, why don't I call y'all tomorrow and tell you I ain't got it? I'm not scared of y'all. Look at do what you got to do then. Do what you have to do. You shouldn't have loaned us no money in the first place. You ever heard of a credit check? Oh, ex-pimp in the other room. Tell him, baby. Tell him don't call here no more. Some brothers intimidated by strong women. You got you to gotta have a strong woman. Some brothers want to hit women. I tell brothers all the time, any man that would hit a woman is a punk. And I don't respect him. I don't respect no man that put his hand on a woman. You don't put your hand on a woman. I don't care how big and strong you think you are. You need to be big enough and strong enough not to put your hand on a woman. You get into an argument with a woman, she get it, I don't care if she get in your face, you don't put your hand on a woman. What you do is you trip her, take her legs out from under her. <laughs> my man right here, <laughs> he, like, he was writing it down, don't put your hand on her, but trip her. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I, I, you know, they're brothers that I liked. They were brothers that I liked until I found out they put their hand on a woman. Now, that's real talk. There was brothers that I liked when I found out they put their hand on a woman, I lost respect for him. That young brother, Chris Brown, I thought he was about to be the next big thing. I, I can't get with him now. Put his hand on Rihanna, I don't care what she did. You hear me uh, shaking hot sauce on that girl's arm and chewing all up on her and biting her up like that? <laughs> that ain't right. Chris Brown trying to be like Bobby Brown. I used to love Bobby, Bobby Brown. After what happened with Whitney, I, I couldn't get with him. I said, you know, I, I, I love Bobby Brown. No, no. After what we did with Whitney, Chris Brown trying to be like Bobby Brown. Trying to be like James Brown. <laughs> James Brown hit his woman. Now, James Brown was 80 years old when he hit his woman. Now, you know, his wife was 30. <laughs> you know, yeah. She should have been there dodging his punches like she was in the Matrix. <laughs> 
But he connected one and I lost respect for him. Chris Brown trying to be like Bobby Brown, trying to be like James Brown. Do y'all see a pattern here, ladies? Stay away from brother's name Brown. I'm going to tell you who started the whole thing. Bishop, you 50, you old enough to remember. Some people ain't old enough to remember who started this whole thing in the modern era. Jim Brown, Hall of Fame football player. A lot of y'all, another Brown, thank you, thank you. A lot of y'all ain't old enough to remember. Jim Brown, Hall of Fame football player, he throwed his wife off the balcony two times. Bishop, that means they stayed together after the first time. Bishop, how you ask first lady to stay with you after you done throwed her off a balcony? I mean, what do you say to a woman after you done throwed her off a balcony? I mean, where you go? Uh, uh, now get back up here and quit tripping. <laughs> she came back upstairs too. You didn't have to throw me off the balcony. All you had to say was change the channel. Because you know whatever they was fighting over was something stupid. I did a show in, I believe it was, I believe it was in Killing, Killing, Texas, Killeen, Killeen, Texas. Newspaper came out, I just hosted Common View. Newspaper came out and they wrote an article about my comedy act. They said, they said that I suggested that women deserve sometimes to be hit. Now I never said that. I said what I'm about to say and that is this. Ladies, just like a man gotta know when to walk away, you got to know when to walk away too, all right? Now, let me be specific. It take two people to stand there and argue like a couple of fools until things get out of hand. Why am I saying this? Long before a man would actually throw his wife off the balcony, long before he would actually do it, you know what I mean? You know what, let me back up. Ladies, I could tell you anything you want to know about a no good Negro, because I used to be one, all right? Long before a man will throw a woman off the balcony, actually, he going to say something like, girl, I tell you what, I tell you what. I tell you what. Praise the Lord, this is Bishop Ernest Johnson inviting you to come to a miracle move of God this Sunday morning at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Come on out if you need healing, you need deliverance, you need to be saved, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to invite you to come on out to the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Join us this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And Bible study is Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Come on out and we'll see you there.